This 13th floor video session is powered by The Rock Shop. Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda. Today we have Reb Fountain with us. How's Hi. it going? Reb, it's, you, you've been on 13th floor sessions before yes. a few times with other folks. So That's now it's about time we get you uh, doing your own stuff. That's right. So. I've been doing working with other people for about the last five years. I've done my own music before as well. And during that time, I've done my own music. But yeah, in terms of releasing anything, it's been a while. So you've got two releases coming up this year just to make up for it. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one is an EP um, that's coming out sort of the end of June. Right. It's called Hopeful and Hopeless. And then I've got an album, full album coming out it's around October. Very good. Because, I mean, I've been seeing you perform for years. I, I, the songs that you played, I know them inside out already. And I imagine a lot of other people do because you've been everywhere. So it's nice to get them finally in a form that people can appreciate them when they need to. It's a huge feet and both of them have been such a long time coming so it's it's odd I mean I've gone on to I've written like a couple of other albums but getting these two projects out is really important um, the first one the the EP we made about a month before my friend Sam Preble passed and it was recorded at the wine cellar it was very live very kind of raw and um, but that was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the album uh, Sam and Dylan and I made uh, a long time ago, like about five years ago. So these two projects that are, you know, they're quite old. They've stood the test of time. Yes. <laughs> but um, in many ways, it's, yeah, it's going to be very cathartic to, to release them, and, but mostly to share them with people. You know, like you say, we've been playing the songs for a long time and very much the heart of Sam's in both of those works. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really cool to... Yeah. yeah. Now the uh, the first song that we're going to hear is actually from the album, which is coming out later in the year, yes. in October. So tell us a little bit about how the circumstances around recording that. Well, um, I I released two records and and we toured a lot. We were we were doing sort of 22, 26 date kind of shows. And uh, Sam and Dylan and I, after the, the the touring sort of ceased a little bit, kept rehearsing a lot. And we took all my new songs and we just played them and played them as a three piece. So it was quite different from kind of the band stuff that we'd been doing and really shaped this show, or not a theater show, but kind of a, a project um, around those songs. And it became very much our songs, even though they were mine that I wrote, you know, it was our thing. And um, most of it was done on the piano. Mm -hmm. um, Sam would play violin most of the time and, and I'd play drums sometimes too and Dylan on the guitar. And so we did that. We rehearsed for about a year and a half and then we did a performance for my friend Simon Gooding who's an amazing engineer and um, Mike. He was just here with the map room. Oh yeah. Just like over last week. Simon is incredible. He's got such a good ear. He's an amazing musician. He was in my band for many years so knew him well and wanted him to be part of this project of recording it. And we really wanted to capture our live performance with it. So we um, invited Simon over and Mike Hall mm -hmm. and Mike Franklin Brown um, on bass and drums respectively. And, and we played and did the whole kind of album. And we said, this is kind of what we want. And so it meant that we were really well rehearsed and those guys had a vision, our vision in mind. And we went into York Street, which was a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and we... And we made a record, and so it's predominantly a live sound. Obviously, we've done some overdubs, but it's it's very slick, very different than the EP, which is you know at the wine cellar, quite raw and, and rustic. Um, so that's kind of how it came about, and and we went through the process of recording, and and we had a few things to add, and then life got in the way on many levels, and hmm. so it sort of got shelved. And then by the time that Sam passed, it was like you know I felt terrible that I hadn't done anything with the record, and. So it took me a while after that to kind of come to terms with, oh, I've got this you know, piece of art that we made together and I haven't released it and I really want to, but I felt really guilty. So there were so many emotions wrapped up in it and, um, and now we're doing it. So right. it's, it's really exciting. It, it's a challenging journey, but we're really lucky because uh, Dave Khan, who also played on the EP, um, he's come on board so we can not recreate that trio, but kind of bring to life the vision that we had at the beginning, mm -hmm. and I'm um, really excited about sharing yeah. that with you. So you've got Dave Kahn and Dylan's story with you today. Yes. So we're going to hear a song from that album. Uh, the song is called Down in the Valley. Lord only knows the truth. 
troubles I've seen. Lord only knows the places I've been for you. Yeah, you. Lord only knows the rivers I've crossed. Lord only knows the ones that I've lost for you. Alrighty, we're back here at the 13th floor with Reb Fountain and Twig the Wonder Cat. Meow. <laughs> and we just heard Down in the Valley, which is from the upcoming album Little Arrows. Now the next song we're going to hear is one that I've heard lots of times in lots of shows at the Wine Cellar and all sorts of places it's called Hopeful and Hopeless, which is off of the EP that's coming out any day now, probably, yeah. if it isn't already out. Um, so what's the story behind the song? Because it, I've seen... You do amazing things with roomfuls of people with this song. Um, wow, well, it, I guess it's a song about people like us just trying to get by, or maybe people less fortunate than us, um, doing the best they can. Um, and, and it really, I mean, I, I wrote this song a while ago, and, and Sam and Dylan and I have been playing it for a while. And um, <clears throat> I'd also been touring in a band called The Eastern, so I right. play in The Eastern, and you know, I've learned so much from... Adam and Jess and all the other folks who play in the Eastern and been on the road a lot and was very inspired by the ability to kind of connect with the audience and work really hard to do it, you know. And um, so this song was born out of kind of both those things, this other project that we've been doing and being on the road a lot, playing folk music and also, yeah, trying to connect. So um, it's really a song about um, feeling... <laughs> feeling like you're just despondent and there's no hope at all, but at the same time wanting to continue and carry on. And I think it very much captures, for me anyway, the essence of what it's like to be an artist or a creative musician or, you know, um, 
sometimes in life it, it it's hard. It's hard out there. <laughs> yeah. um, and we all feel it on different levels, not just in the creative arts. And so, I mean, there's lots more to it, but I, I like to keep it very sort of universal, you know, that people can connect with that idea that, yeah, fuck it, it's shit. But also, it's amazing. You know, and you, and you can find that in yourself to kind of uplift yourself out of the times where you feel despondent and mm. despair, which you know, we all do. Do people come up and talk to you afterwards about the song when they hear you sing it? Um, people are often really reticent to come up and talk to me. I, I have a great reception for the yeah. song, you know, yeah. and I think that um, the best thing about the song is that everyone else sings, yeah. you know, so we can all sing along together. and. It's very interesting watching people in the audience, you know. <laughs> There's some people who are like, holding on, I'm not going to sing, I'm not going to sing, and then they'll sort of burst into song. And, and some people who you, you can see that even allow themselves to open up and express something like that, they have to close their eyes or kind of be quite cool. But, um, yeah, so for me it's a gift to share something that's important to me and then I, I get it back, you know. And, and um, So I guess they don't necessarily come up and say, well, some people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was amazing. Loved that. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly it's that moment that we're in together and we can share it, you know. So. Well, let's share it now. People can sit at home and sing along to their TVs and computers, huh? <laughs> All right. So much doubt I hear in the wasteland Like where sinners come undone Water to chastise me, no shade under Christ's apple tree. I'm weary with the toil. They may say, Don't love me. I'm used to pushing time away. Out here carving my own line for so long. Stop the goddamn rain. Oh, fallen hopeless. Oh, fallen hopeless. All you guys better open your eyes, get us out of this goddamn mess, and fight for the hopeful and hope. It's the best me The fat of the land Blessed be Sacrificial bees They're killing their own selves Each time that I get close to torn apart, strewn like a desert seed and grown like a cactus weed. I'm living on a prayer for the Out of this goddamn mess, and fight for When you say that it's over, your words kiss death upon my mouth. Kiss the cheeks, kiss the lips of the ones that I love and pass it round. Always knew this was hell, but there's no one up there looking down.
out of this goddamn mess and fight for hopeful and hopeless. Right, Joe, we're back here with Reb Fountain, and we got one more song to listen to with Reb and Dave and Dylan, but uh, you, you kind of touched on the fact that you know, you've been doing this for a while, and it's it's tough out there doing it. And you know, you've been working on a lot of these songs for a, a long time. But at the same time, it feels like there's a real strong community that you're a basic, you're a big part of. Uh, is does it feel like that for you that you have a lot of support and a lot of other people around you? Yes, very much so. I don't think I felt that when I did my first my first album. I felt very disconnected. And that was what, about 10 years ago? It was a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and then my second album I made with some of my, like Sam and, and Dylan were there, we made it together and Brennan and Simon. And um, so I was starting to build that, but it's really taken me a long time. And to be honest with you, there was just this one moment where we were in the wine cellar and it was after Sam's funeral and the wine cellar is kind of our second home in Auckland. and um, and. I was playing Hopeful and Hopeless. We just all of a sudden just started to have a sing along. And I, I was standing there, I could barely get the song out, but I was like, I'm doing this for Sam. And, and my friends were out there and I saw them and I, was, I felt all of a sudden incredibly embraced like I'd never felt before. And I think, um, especially the past couple of years, I've really felt that sense of community and it is all over New Zealand, you know, and we're supporting ourselves and each other in a, in a, a deeper way now, I think. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm very honoured to play with the musicians that I play with and to know these people and call them friends. Mm -hmm. well, we have one more song to hear, which oh, is yeah. off the new EP. <laughs> I might swear on it. Sorry, Marty. That's all right. <laughs> you can do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it is tough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is called Gold. Yeah, this, right. is, this is called Gold. Do you want to know about it? I do. I want to know all about it. <laughs> so, um, the f a long time ago, I, I went to live in the UK mm -hmm. and then lived in Seattle and on the West Coast, um, California, and was traveling around with my partner at the time. And um, especially when we got to Seattle, I went to jazz school there, but um, we were sort of still embodying that whole concept of a rock and roll dream. And I think it's very much part of my generation where, you know, you're going to you're going to make it. Right. And so, but along the way, the reality is, is that most people get lost in, in drugs, <laughs> you know, and fall apart. Um, so this song is kind of about that, that journey, you know, you, you want the success, but you get lost and in, in sidetracked and the things, um, things on the way. And um, so, yeah, it's called Gold and mm -hmm. it's about that, that desire for something, maybe that desire for fame that's not actually necessarily genuine in respect to your relationship to music. Mm. And for me anyway, I've learned a lot coming from having that desire, wanting to be successful and going, well, actually I want the heart of it, I want the meaning, I want the work, you know. Um, and so this song is kind of about that, that first step. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming and doing this. Thank uh, you so it's much. It's great Mike. to hear these songs and hopefully everyone will go out and cool. buy their own copy and version of them. And see you when you play out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to share the vinyl with you guys. It'll uh, be yes, so good. Definitely. <laughs> and right. to your collection, Marty. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. So 
you bought the lot for a dime. So worthless, baby, I ain't even got time. It's just desire, flip the coin and it's free. Dig through hell to heaven, boy, is what I need. Searching for a heart of gold Feel you be and you know I'm so Keep me searching for a heart of gold Something bigger than us, bigger than all. 